Hi everybody, it's Wendy and Leo. <laughs> He's coming over. Hi darling. Um, we're here for part three of our um, ring bound journal. Um, this is the sort of journal that we're making. And we've already made uh, the two internal inserts, the cover, and we've made the three bags in our last our last uh, video. Um, so today we're going to make three journals for the interior and the journals look like this. I, um, when I did the, the original, Leo, no darling, oh my gosh, he's laying on top of everything. I don't think he's in frame, but yeah, there's his paws right there. Uh, last time, or last journal that I made, I used the trifold um, uh, work card that I got from a tattered dream. Thank you, Denise. And I've, I'm all out of those, so I've just used scrapbook paper. And so I made one to show you, and we're gonna do three of these for the interior, because um, I think it would be nice to have one in the three sections of the book. Uh, and uh, so I've just used scrapbook paper, and this is Tim Holtz paper. Um, and there's the journal, and this is one, and we'll make the other two. And there's the spine right here. So, why don't we get started? I'm going to pull out one of these little inside pages because I like to use <coughs> those for the template for the holes. All right, Lee, you're going to have to move, buddy. Up you go. Up you go. All right, so for these next couple, I've decided to use the, um, you know, the back pages of the Tim Holtz Ideology oh, scrapbook paper. And this one was, was one of the ones that has the four six by sixes. And I thought, why don't we use uh, one of those? And then the next one we'll use a piece that has the, um, I think it has 12 of the three by fours on it. Just because, I think, you know, because we're going to be decorating a bit as well, I think it will just add to that grungy look. So you want to cut whatever piece of scrapbook paper you use, and I recommend using double-sided. Um, just so that you have an image on both sides. If you don't have an image on the inside of your scrapbook paper, I would probably just glue a nice piece of coffee stain paper on the inside. <coughs> Pardon me, and that would work well too. So, what I've done is I have, whoops, I want to cut this. This is seven and, I've cut it seven and a quarter. Remember the insert is seven inches here, uh, the interior page, and I've thought it's okay if it goes over a little bit, but you don't want it to go past seven and a half, which is the size of your cover. So I went for seven inches. And this is what I've done. I've cut them. There's two of them. I've cut seven and a quarter, and then I cut them to nine and a half in length, because that just works out well for our purposes. So this one... I'm just going to cut with my scissor. I would use a cutting device if you have it. <laughs> so, there you go. What you want to do is you cut it nine and a half, seven and a quarter high, nine and a half wide. And then what you want to do is you want to fold it, but you don't want to fold it. I don't want to put this on the outside. You want to fold it so that you have about an inch left here. Okay, so I think that makes that about four and a quarter, four inches or so here on the front. And what you can do, I've got these all going that way, as you can tell. See, they're all folded so that they open this way. But there's no reason why, let's switch this. We put it, we'll have one going the other way. That way when you open the book, you've got one facing you when you go like this. Otherwise, when we put these in the book, um, this part's going to be at the back, which is fine. I've done that in the other books as well. So, all right, nine and a half, seven and a quarter. Fold it so that you have about an inch left there. And I just want to make sure my fold is good. Perfect. All right. Next step is you want to cut, and I just used the pe a little piece from what was left from what I cut off. This is an inch and a half wide, seven and a quarter. Inch and a half wide, 
and seven and a quarter. And this one I've already inked. So what you want to do is you want to fold it in half. This is hard to do at this angle, but there you go. You want to fold it in half. And you could definitely use your bone folder or your scoreboard, whatever works for you. And then you just want to, I like to ink these early on because it's hard to get this seam inked otherwise without making a bit of a mess. I mean, we still don't know. We may be covering part of this with when we decorate. So if you forget to do the inking, there's nothing wrong with that. There'll be some other way to, uh, to get it the color that you want as we go. And I'm just gonna do a little linking on the spine. There we go. I know, boring to watch inking. Boring. Okay, let's put these on. So what you wanna do, I've got my Fabri-Tac. Sorry, I'll take the cover out of my mouth. Forget I'm doing a tutorial. And, uh, you know, you probably want to hear me. Oh, my goodness. Too funny. Okay. So let's put this one on here. And this time, you want to butt it right into the corner. Can you see that? Right into the corner. Because we made these, this is going to be, it may be as five and a quarter, and we don't want it to be, it's okay if it's a little bit wider. Put it this way. It's okay if it's a little wider, and it is, than the inside board, but we don't want it to be wider than five and a half, which is what the cover is. So that's important. We've got that one done, and then let's do this one. Get our glue out. And we're gonna just put lots of glue there. And, gosh, here we go. We're going to stick this on here, and we're going to butt it right in, like right in. And this was just a scrap of, scrap of paper that I had that I thought would look nice with the writing on it. I think it looks great. Okay, whoops, I'm sorry, guys. So the next step is to put mark where we're going to put our grommets and I'm going to use this as my template and you can see it's going to come over the top and the bottom or you can line it up with one or the other but I like kind of centering it. I've got my pen and I'm going to make my mark in the center so that's one and then this one we'll do the same with Kind of center it. Okay, and then we're going to put a mark in the center of each of these. All right, so this next bit, I promised two of the subbies. Um, sorry, uh, Lucia and Maureen, hi ladies, of um, how I use the crop a dial a little bit closer. So I hope it, I hope it focuses. So I use the larger hole punch, which is at the top. And I center it over top of that pen mark. I think they were more interested in how we set the grommets, but I'll try and show you this bit too, right over top. Might as well do them all at once. That one, and then this one. Okay, so then I take my eyelets and I push them in. Remember they should be the bigger ones so that your ring will go through. So I just push them in like that. Um, from, it doesn't matter which side you use to be honest with you, but I just like to do it from what I perceive to be where the opening is going to be of the book. So I do it like that. Now, when you look at your crop dial, I have it on this setting where it's jutted out like so. 
And then on the other side, I have it on the silver, and I hope they're always consistent in color, the silver one with the little bump. It's actually quite a defined bump. I think it's the biggest bump of all of them. So what I do is, the side that looks, uh, the side that's tall, the shank side, I turn it up like that and I put that little, that bit with quite the silver, the jutting, <laughs> the jutting bit, oh my gosh, I can't think of the words. I put it underneath. So the jutting bit is kind of matching the jutting bit of the eyelet. I put it underneath and then I squeeze. That's a tough angle to squeeze at. So I'm going to have to see the jutting bit and I put it in there and then I squeeze. There we go. This one I didn't do a great job with because I was at a bad angle. So there, that is how it's done. So we'll do this one as well. Once again, I turn it over. I take that, the bit with the shank, and put it underneath where the shank is showing, like so, and then squeeze, and then I do it again where the shank is. I hope that helped Maureen and Lucia. So there, we're set. We are set. So we've got our pages, our cover pages for our journals already. Now all we have to do is grab some paper, and I've already set some up. Remembering that this is seven and a half long, I made these seven inches long and eight inches wide because I knew that would fit within what I have done for my page size. So if you were making a bigger book, I'm just going to fold these just for interest and texture. If you were making a bigger book, then I would, you know, you have to adjust your pages. Sorry, that's a snowplow. We are, we had quite a snowstorm this weekend and we're still getting snow today. So, winter. It's winter. You gotta expect it. So then we just fold my pages. I think I've got seven or eight pages in total. So let's just set these up. I'm going to put that foldy bit at the back. So we're putting these in the crease. Um, I'm going to put in my little piece there. Yeah, seven pages. Piece of coffee stain paper there. And you could put colored paper. You could put botanical pages, whatever you like. I'm going to put these two in like that. And then this page. So, the trick is just to make sure that they're all in the crease and that you've got them covered when you have it folded, which I have. So, and then I just like to make sure that anything that's meant to be the same size is actually flush. And then I'm just going to put that under my sewing machine and hope that I'm... There we go. I think I'm at the center. And so what I'm doing is I'm just going right down that seam where I had the crease. I don't backstitch. I don't think there's any need to. Um, and then look at that. Seams right down the center. And remember those, it doesn't matter if they're upside down, but this one is meant to come, you're meant to look at it this way um, when it goes in the book. So it's going to go in the book like that. I think that looks great. So we've got that one done. I'm just going to put a uh, paper clip at the top and we could easily put, we'll put a more decorative one when we get get to the next bit. So let's do the last one as well. So, um, for next time, we'll do, um, we'll do the three additional pages. And so if you could, if you have a window envelope, that would be great to have. 
if you have it. If you don't, don't worry about it. You know, don't worry about it. Just bring an envelope of some sort. Um, if you have a CD case, or not case, CD envelope, that would be great. So a window envelope, a CD envelope. If you don't have a CD envelope, don't worry about it. Uh, just bring two envelopes, maybe a couple different sizes, but sizes that are, bring a legal envelope and then bring a shorter, chubbier envelope. <laughs> um, and if you have it, a time card would be great. Just one of those individual, tall, narrow time cards. And if you don't, just bring some scrap paper or scrap book paper and we'll go with that. So let's pick up this one. And we've got that page in there. I'll stick this in here. I kind of have a pattern, don't I, to how I'm doing this, that I'm putting that tall one in. Gosh, I hope I've been in frame. It's tough when I'm trying to get the sewing machine in frame as well. Um, but as long as you get the idea of what we're trying to achieve here, that's the important bit. Sorry about the plow sounds. And then what we're going to do again, making sure this is in the center. Just I can feel it with my hand under here to make sure I'm in the center. And I'm just going to go down the center. Probably didn't do as great a job as last time on that. I'm off a little bit, but that just adds to the character. Um, so what you could do in preparation for next week, well, let's have a look. This is the third journal. And so what you could do for preparation for next week is um, just ink up the exterior of this. So I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I hope that um, you are having decent weather uh, and whatever that means for you. I mean, lots of folks really enjoy having a lot of snow around and I don't mind the snow. I just mind when it um, affects the ability to get around. Um, so, oh well, it's winter. You gotta expect that, right? So, and then I would do the inside as well, like so. Anyway, best not to hold you up while I do this inking. Um, but that's it. That is what we're doing, or what we've done today, and we'll be set for next week when we do the next three pages. And then after that, we'll start our decorating, which should go fairly quickly. That, to me, is the real fun part. So those are our three pages, our three journals, for our fun little hardcover ringbound journal. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this is helpful. I hope you're enjoying the series. I apologize if I was a little, uh, I don't know, rambly today. That tends to be my MO anyway. So what, what am I going to say? I'm a rambler. Okay, guys, have yourself a great day. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye.